For those of you kind of new to the game, you may not realize just how much more productive wire-fed processes can be. They have a wide range of travel speed that you can use by adjusting voltage and wire feed speed. You can go a slow travel speed or you can go really fast. You can't always do that with stick welding. There's, there's a much more narrow range. So I'm gonna show a previous example of a stick weld on a turntable positioner, and then I'll do some short circuit MIG wire feed, two different settings, one twice as fast as the other one. Let's hit it. In an earlier video, I chucked up this tube to plate joint in a positioner and made a multi-pass stick weld with 332.7018. It was kind of tough to get the travel speed or the positioner speed adjusted so the rod would stay in one place so I could film it. A stick rod is just not very versatile when it comes to extreme travel speeds. It just kind of burns off at the rate it wants to burn off. It does a good job, it's just not as productive as wire-fed processes. Sometimes it's hard to judge travel speed, so I put these quarter-inch space lines to help us see. I set my wire feed speed to 212 inches a minute, which is kind of low. As you can see right here, especially when I hit that first hash mark, from the time I hit the first one to the time I get to the fourth one, which is one inch, it wound up taking 10 seconds to go one inch. That's not a very fast travel speed. In fact, that's just about what the stick weld you saw earlier was. Six inches a minute is not very fast, but that just seems to be what it wanted to do with those settings. Looks okay. We'll do a cut and etch test in just a minute. Now let's bump up the both voltage and the wire feed speed. I'm using 035 diameter wire. This is going to be a lot faster. And because of that, I'm going to use a slightly different technique, just a little forward and back type hitch, but with a much quicker travel speed and of course a, a smaller bead size. But it doubled the travel speed. Of course it's going to give a little bit of a different looking bead, but depending on what you're doing might be okay. You know I like to test things, so I chopped this thing through each weld and polished it, put a little acid etch on each one, and we're going to see that in just a second. This is the slow travel speed here. I'm just trying to do that one side. That's not a bad penetration profile. We'll flip it around now and do the faster travel speed. The one on the left is the one I'm really concerned with. That's the one you saw. Not bad. A little bit smaller weld size, but it hit the root. Now let's put up a round piece in a positioner here. This is the MK positioner with the digital readout. Without doing any scientific calculations to get the exact travel speed, I just kind of eyeballed it and got it pretty close. And then I'll double it. This is pretty darn close to what you saw on the flat plate. And the bead is going to look about the same as it did on that little flat T-joint. If you have a customer that demands this certain look, that's one thing. But if that's not a requirement, you can make a little bit more money, get things done quicker by bumping up the settings, increasing your travel speed. I'm doubling the speed here and using that same technique that I used on the flat T-joint. And that doesn't look bad, just different. It depends on the size of the weld called out, but that could be just fine. Okay, quick review. 19 volts, 212 inches a minute with 035 wire produce this result. Doubling the travel speed on the positioner, 20 volts, 275 inches a minute. Definitely looks a little different, but still could be fine. But since it was twice as fast as the other weld, if I was doing this for profit, I would probably pick the higher settings and faster travel speed.